Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review on what I believe is pronounced a Fogarty repairable atomizer, which I purchased from www.vapistvaporizers.co.uk. Now I say I think it's pronounced Fogarty because it's spelled F O G A T I. So it could be Fogarty, it could be Fogatty, or it could be Fogatty. So I've uh, decided to call it a Fogarty, and um, it may be right, it may be wrong, don't know. Anyway, no need for any disclaimers today. Just go straight ahead and show you what's in the tube. Okay, so like I just said, I'm not too sure if it's pronounced Fogarty, Fogatty, or Fogatty. But I've been uh, calling it a Fogarty, so I'm just going to stick with that for the time being. Okay, so the Fogarty Type 22 comes in a nice little sort of a presentation tube. And inside you're going to find the actual atomizer. And when it says uh, type 22, that's referring to the diameter, which is 22 millimetres. You're also going to get one and a half metres of 0.20 gauge cancel wire, which I believe the American equivalent is 32 AWG. You're going to get yourself a small sheet of 400 stainless steel mesh for making up your wicks. You're going to get a bag which contains some uh, spare positive and negative screws and some spare O-rings plus a two millimeter hex key. And uh, I thought they just sort of chucked in a, a freebie bottle of e-liquid, but I've just checked on the website and it does actually state in the pack contents that you also get a 10 mil bottle of juice too. Okay, let's go straight ahead then and show you the actual atomizer in a bit more detail. Okay, so here we have all the main parts to make up the Fogarty Type 22. And like I said, the 22 is referring to the diameter in millimeters. All made out of food grade 304L stainless steel with the exception of the uh, Pyrex glass tank. And the tank can hold 4 millilitres of e-liquid. So you have your base section, you then have the centre post that runs through the centre of the tank. And this has a 510 connection, so that means you can use the, uh, the Fogarty on any other device that also has a 510 connection. Then also you have the, uh, the Pyrex glass tank and the top section, and this is where you're going to you know, feed your wick through and wrap your coils. And you can either have it with a, a U-wick setup or a single wick setup, or I suppose if you wanted to as well, you could also have a dual coil setup, uh, but personally I'm not a big fan of that. You then have the top cap, and uh, around the uh, top there you can see you've got these nice little lines that have been cut out, and a little bit of engraving, plus a hole in the top, and this is so you can attach uh, your 510 drip tip, and uh, pretty much every drip tip that I've tried in there, you know, fits uh, nice and snug. Okay, let's go straight ahead then and uh, show you how to get this set up. Okay, so as I go along, I can show you some of the nice little features of the Fogarty. And the first one is to do with this central tube, which runs through the middle of the tank and then gets connected into whatever 510 device you're using. Now, either end here has a 510 threading, so you can, in theory, set it up either way. But one end is slightly shorter than the other end. And the reason for this is, say, for example, you've got a mod with a particularly shallow 510 atomizer connection, Obviously you can use a shorter end and it'll give you a better chance of the Fogarty sitting nice and flush on the end of your mod. And it also has an adjustable centre pin. And obviously if you need to use this end, then just uh, take the screw out and put it into that end instead. Okay, so the first thing you need to do then is attach it to the base. And as you can see, uh, the base and the, uh, the central tube here has O-rings. It's obviously going to prevent any sort of leaking. So just screw the two parts together and just make sure it's uh, you know, nice and tight. Okay, for the next step, we just need to secure the tank into place. And as you can see, it's a really nice thick tank. It feels very, very solid. So, you know, as long as you're not sort of whacking it with a hammer, you should uh, survive most sort of uh, wear and tear, really. Okay, so to secure the tank, we've just got to take the, uh, the base section that you've already made up, drop the tank into place, and then take the top section. And as you can see, you've got another O-ring there to uh, obviously prevent any leaks. And uh, then just uh, screw the parts together. And once again, just make sure you do it up nice and tight. And then to sort of finish off the main assembly, you just need to insert the longer positive screw through this little sort of, um, I suppose you call it like a collar, something like that. And then just uh, screw it into the central hole there. And this is basically going to be used for trapping the positive end of your wire. 
Now before I go on to the next stage, I just want to show you a couple more features. And the first one is to do with this top cap. Now like I said, this is 22 millimeters in diameter. So inside should probably be around sort of, I don't know, like 20 millimeters. And it is, but it isn't because you've got this uh, chamber that's been cut out. And the wick and the coil are gonna sit inside this chamber. And as it creates like a, a smaller space, it's then meant to uh, intensify the flavor, create a warmer vape. And we'll obviously talk about that later on in the review. Now when adding the top cap, because of the shape of the chamber, you do have to make sure it matches up with the shape uh, on the top section here. And the way to do that is to uh, find a little air hole on the side there, and then just uh, line it up with the air hole on the top cap, and just uh, slide the two together. And this then uh, moves me on to the next feature, which you may have already guessed what it is, and that is it has adjustable airflow. So at the moment it's in its uh, like most open position, which I believe is around sort of two millimeters. But if you want a tighter draw, just give it a little slide, and you can just start to uh, close it off until you find a uh, until you find out uh, you know what suits you personally. Okay, for the next step, I'm going to make myself up a U wick, and the reason I'm using a U wick is because uh, one, the Fogarty has obviously uh, two holes, which allows you to make up a U wick, and it also has the advantage of basically having two wicks feeding one coil, which then means you've got a uh, you know very little chance of getting any sort of hot spots. Now the mesh I've cut out at 75 millimeters by 20 millimeters, and um, the wick has already been cut with the grain at 45 degrees. So when you get your Fogarty, the actual mesh that comes with it has already been cut at the 45 degree angle. So by that I mean that instead of the grain of the mesh going from left to right here, the actual grain is going from here and down in 45 degrees. And this just means it's a lot easier to bend to get your actual U shape without sort of getting any sort of kinks and that. Only slight disadvantage though is that it means it is quite hard to roll up because it becomes very springy. And so I'm going to sort of uh, skip through this part because otherwise it's going to be uh, really boring to watch. But if you do find that uh, you know, you're struggling to roll it up, you may find it easier to get a little piece of thin wire and actually wrap the, uh, the material around that piece of wire. Then once you've got the shape, then pull the wire out. Me personally though, I can't seem to get on with that method at all. I actually find it a lot easier just to uh, keep on rolling it like this. But you know, whatever works for you, that's the best way to do it. Now one thing I do want to point out is that the wick holes on the Fogarty are very small. I think they're only around sort of two millimeters in diameter. So it is a case of having to really roll the mesh up very tight to be able to get them to fit down there. As you can see, I've got that sort of pretty much uh, exactly how I want it now. I can still feel a little bit of resistance there, but uh, that should be perfectly fine. And now what I need to do is obviously oxidise the mesh. All right, so I'm going to oxidise my, uh, my U wick now, but I'm not going to show you the whole process, just to uh, obviously prevent the video from being too long. And also, everybody has their own sort of methods of doing it, and uh, you know whatever works for you, that is the correct way of doing it. What I will quickly show you is just a little tip for creating a, like a nice bend because at the moment where the mesh has been cut out at a 45 degree angle, like the grain of the mesh, it does make it very springy. So uh, to create a nicer bend as you're oxidising it, I do the bend first and I just literally fold the, uh, the wick over, hold it in place like that so you've got a nice sort of uh, nice bend there and then just heat up this part very quickly to uh, literally in the flame, take it out of the flame and then that's it, it locks it into position and then you can uh, carry on uh, oxidising it as normal. And then hopefully you should end up with something like that. Now when it comes to attaching the wire to the negative terminal, it is a little bit tricky because the terminal screw is actually sort of uh, below this area that's been cut out. So I find that the easiest way to do this is to install the wick, then undo the screw as much as you possibly can take the wire and as you force it in between the wick and the screw without dropping it like so and then the wick is actually pushing the wire underneath it hopefully you can see there then what you've got to do is uh, take your allen key and tighten it up and once it's tightened you've got this little bit of like overhanging wire just remove that by applying a bit of tension and giving it a spin
Now, when it comes to wrapping the coils around the gear wick, it is obviously a little bit more tricky. Well, I personally find it a little bit more tricky. And obviously, you can use a single wick as well or on the uh, Fogarty. There's no problems with that. But me personally, I've just been really enjoying it with a U wick setup. Now, when it comes to wrapping it, you're going to have to sort of almost, it's a bit like sewing, really. You've got to try and feed it through all the way under. Push your coil down a little bit. Back over the top, and then uh, keep on repeating it basically until you get up to uh, roughly where the, uh, the positive terminal is. And then once you got onto the uh, last coil, you just got to trap it underneath the screw. So just wind it underneath there. And take the allen key and trap it in place. And that should be okay. Tidy up the coils a little bit. And uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit more luck this time, but uh, again, to remove the top wire, just need to apply a bit of tension and uh, give it a twist. It's a bit easier that time. Okay, so at this stage, I'm just going to attach it to uh, my Provery and uh, just so I can sort of read the resistance and make sure everything's going to fire up correctly. And the resistance is... 1.3 ohms and hopefully these will fire up and it all seems to be going quite nicely actually I don't need to do anything that makes a, a nice change if you do find that some of your coils aren't all glowing sort of nice and evenly if you get something like a little screwdriver or a little needle like that just give the coils a, just a slight nudge up or down and then eventually, you know, you're just going to basically sort of move the coil away from any sort of problem area. And then they should uh, all fire up nice and evenly. Right, now it's all uh, fully set up. So all I need to do now is add some e-liquid to the tank. And it can hold around uh, four millilitres of e-liquid. And you've got a little sort of uh, filling hole here. So all we're going to do is just insert the spike and uh, fill it up. Okay, so now the tank has been filled up with some e-liquid, I've just attached it to my GP PAPS, which is what I've been mainly using the uh, Fogarty with. And it really is a very nice combination, gives it a nice sort of uh, hybrid look. And it's all worth firing up nicely, getting plenty of vapour there. Okay, so all I need to do now is attach the top cap. And like I said, you just want to make sure that the air hole is lining up with this little air hole here. So that just uh, pushes on. And from that stage, you can also just uh, adjust your airflow to suit. And um, the top cap, even though it's held in place by O-rings, it's on there very solid. Like There's no movement there whatsoever. Okay, then to uh, finish off, just need to attach the drip tip and go and have a nice vape. Okay, so that is the Fogarty Type 22 Genesis Atomizer. Let's go ahead and see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the Fogarty. And what I'll do now is go ahead and show you in action. So I'm going to be using it on my GP PAPS, which is just like a standard sort of tube mod. The battery came off the charger around sort of 30 minutes ago, so it should be reading at around sort of 4 volts. When I last checked the resistance about sort of 5 minutes ago, it was reading at 1.4 ohms, it's gone up a little bit. And the tank has been filled up with some 18 milligram strength tobacco flavoured e-liquid, and it's just a PG based e-liquid. Now, as you can see, like vapor wise, you know, producing plenty of vapor. As what you would expect from like a, a nicely set up Genesis Atomizer, you know, they all tend to be very good for vapor reduction. Throw heat wise, getting that nice sort of uh, strong kick in the back of my throat. 
And at the moment I've got this set up with the air hole and it's like most open position and that's the way that I've been uh, using it. When I first got it, I had a bit of an experiment but I soon realised that uh, in its most open position is how I, I like it for me personally. So like I said, in its most open position, you get a nice amount of vapour, getting a really nice sort of strong thump in the back of your throat. As you start to close the air hole though, the, um, the actual throat hit starts to get a little bit stronger and stronger and stronger and it does become sort of quite sort of scratchy. Uh, on the back of the throat, which is not what I particularly like. However, if you are a person who does like a nice uh, strong throat hit or that sort of scratchy sensation, then obviously you have got that option by simply um, you know, turning the, uh, the old air control around a little bit. However, you will be trading off a bit of vapour production for that though, as you uh, start to uh, decrease the, uh, the size of the air hole. Yeah, the throat hit gets uh, stronger, but the vapour starts to reduce slightly. Not like massive amounts, but nevertheless it is a, a noticeable reduction. Flavour-wise, you know, it's a Genesis Atomizer, so as long as it's set up nicely, no hot spots, you're always going to get a fantastic flavour out of them. Now, the uh, Fogarty was designed with that sort of top cap with the chamber, which was said to be uh, for the purpose of intensifying the flavour of your e-liquids. Now, I can't honestly say, yes, my e-liquids flavour has been intensified. I would say maybe, maybe a smidgen stronger and literally just like a Nats cock stronger. What I have noticed more so than the intensity is that it does tend to make my uh, favourite tobacco flavoured e-liquid taste a little bit sweeter. Now it is quite a sweet tobacco flavour anyway, you know, but uh, compared to other Genesis atomizers, it definitely is making it just a, just a little bit sort of sweeter. But I wouldn't really say it intensifies the flavour. But the flavour's very good though. Uh, the warmth of the vapour is a, a little bit sort of user-defined really. In its most open position, which is what I, obviously I'm using here, I'm still finding that the vapour is coming out really nice and warm and it's sort of perfect temperature for how I like to vape. And on a scale of uh, 1 to 5, 1 being really cold, 5 being really hot, I'd probably say it's around sort of 3.5, something like that. So even in its most open position, it is still giving you quite a warm vape. As you start to uh, close the air, uh, the air hole, it does start to uh, get a little bit hotter as well. Not, not massively hot, but noticeably hotter. So it, like I said, you know, if you want a, a hot vape, you can obviously have that option by just closing off the air hole. If you want a slightly warmer, if, uh, no, not slightly warmer, if you want a slightly cooler vape, which is still actually quite a warm vape, obviously you can uh, sort of fully open it. Now, I do get the occasional person who writes me asking for a recommendation on an atomizer that gives them a cool vape. And if that's what you're after, this is probably not the one to go for because, like I said, even in its most open position, it's still giving me a, a really nice warm vape. When it comes to the uh, draw, again, it's sort of uh, user-defined, really. If you want a, um, like a nice open draw, then obviously you have the air hole in its most open position. If you want a tighter draw, then obviously you can start to uh, close it off. Now, if I was going to say a scale of like a 1 to 5, 1 being a really loose draw, 5 being a, a really tight draw, then even in its most open position, and even though it's got quite a large air hole, it still has got a really nice amount of resistance, and it's, again, it's just how I like it personally. So uh, if you're after an exceptionally loose draw, like, for example, something like on the, uh, like the Zenesis, which is a very, uh, very open draw, then again, it's not going to be the one for you unless you start to get your jaw bits out and uh, increase the size. For me, I think that most people were probably quite happy with the draw in its open position, unless you happen to like an exceptionally loose draw. And obviously, you know, as you start to close the air hole, the uh, draw gets tighter and tighter. So if you like to have a tight draw, and obviously you can just, uh, you know, adjust it to uh, suit your own personal taste. When it comes to the uh, ease of setup, most experienced people are probably going to get on quite well with it after sort of, you know, maybe a couple of goes on it to sort of suss it out. The less experienced people, I can imagine quite a few people struggling with it for uh, you know, a few reasons. 
First one is the negative screw, attaching the, uh, like the wire to the negative screw. Because it's sitting sort of below that little sort of, uh, recess or the little cutout area, it does make it a little bit tricky to uh, attach the wire. And um, I tried a few different ways, and in the end, like the way I come up with, like I showed you in the close-up shots, by putting the wick in first, and then uh, unscrewing the uh, screw as far as you can, and then sort of sliding the wire in between the two and letting the wick sort of push it over. That sort of made it easier for me personally. So I can see a few people maybe sort of struggling with that. The uh, wick hole positioning, the wick hole is quite far away from the center post. So if you're going to use like a single wick rather than like a, a U wick, it means the top coil is going to be quite far away from the center post. So also you're going to have quite a long piece of wire there, which again can sometimes uh, cause you problems especially if that wick is not 100% uh, guaranteed to be uh, oxidised. So you may be sort of obviously having to do a little bit of sort of uh, coil nudging. And uh, what's the other thing? Uh, the actual size of the wick holes, they're very, very small. I think they're only around sort of two millimetres. So that means you've got to really you know, roll your mesh up really, really tight and small to be able to actually sort of fit them down the, uh, fit them down the holes. Um, but, you know, that is... That's about it really. And once you can get over those obstacles, then it does become like you know sort of fairly fairly straightforward to set up. And I probably would recommend using a U wick rather than a single wick, mainly for the reason it does take longer to set up, but it brings the top coil a lot closer to the centre post, and that does you know eliminate a fair amount of sort of headache. Build quality wise, it's built exceptionally well. Uh, you know, machining is excellent. There's no sort of little dings or scratches or scuffs or anything like that. All the threads go together exceptionally smoothly. You can just sort of spin it and it will just carry on spinning. Very nicely done. Uh, I love the looks of it as well. It's quite a big tank, the four mil tank, but uh, you know a lot of it is hidden and it just seems to be like a nice sort of short, stumpy atomizer rather than an exceptionally long one. Uh, the top cap, even though held in place with O-rings, is on there really firm. Like there's literally sort of no movement whatsoever, and you can give it a good sort of shake, and it's not going to sort of uh, start falling off. However, it's almost like a disadvantage as well because it does sort of bugger up the uh, adjustable airflow a little bit. Now, when you first put the top cap on, the O-rings nine times out of ten have got a little bit of juice on it, so it means you can sort of slide it about quite easy to uh, position it to uh, you know adjust the draw to your taste. But uh, say for example, you know, I'll take this for the next hour. By that time, all the liquid that's on those O-rings will probably have been uh, dispersed and uh, the O-rings are really gripping the top cap, which then makes it quite stiff to actually sort of spin it and to adjust the draw. So um, for me, it's not too much of an issue because I like it in the open position. I'll put it on, make sure it's in the open position and that's it, I don't need to touch it again until I need to uh, obviously re refill the tank. So when you first get it, you're probably going to be experimenting with the uh, the airflow a little bit. And I would just advise, you know, just keep them, the O-rings with a little bit of juice on there. And you can sort of spin it around and obviously uh, test it out and find out what you'd like uh, for yourself. But if you're going to be sort of, uh, you know, adjusting it on the fly, a couple of hours after you first put the tank on, you might sort of struggle a bit because those O-rings do uh, really grip the top cap nice and firmly. Okay, there's not a great deal else I can tell you. You know, it's a, it's a great atomizer. It looks the business. It vapes great. You know, plenty of vapor, plenty of flavor, plenty of throat hit. And, you know, it's got some nice new features there as well, which make it you know, a little bit different to um, some of the other things I've been reviewing recently. Okay, so, you know, if you fancy trying one out for yourself, go along to www.vapistvaporizers.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching and also come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e dash sig-reviews.com. Cheers guys, happy vaping, see you later.